In today's book review, we got Metaphysics of Astrology and it's Why Astrology Works by Ivan Antic. So unlike the majority of your astrology books that deal with the planets, the houses, and what they all mean, this is more to show exactly how astrology works and the metaphysics of it. Astrology was the queen of sciences from ancient times. As the moment of a newborn baby draws its first breath into existence, the spirit of this world enters it and gives it life. This is the point of time on earth and relating to the sun, the neighboring planets, and the narrower and farther stars. All these bodies of energy are energy forms. All of nature is energy which expresses itself by shaping itself in varieties of forms and at the moment when an infant cuts its physical ties to its mother, its connection to the new wider whole is introduced, its connection to the cosmos, and their essence, these events are in motion and movements reflecting the true nature of the cosmos which is represented by general and perpetual movements. Basically when you're born, all the energies in the universe, whether that be like all the planets, they shoot a certain energy and they all have their own things with their own meaning, their own information. At the time you were born, all those things that are into play, that's just who you are as a person. So if you guys ever know like the different personality tests, this is the personality test down in between. This is literally who you are and that's how it works. So astrology shows us how this movement takes place following the law of the golden ratio, the sacred geometry with the first breath the human receives, the pattern of the person's personification, their character, which over time becomes expressed as destiny and reflected into detail by their natal chart. Astrology shows us that this world has been constructed and what generates its events. These events are destiny of all being. The destiny of all human beings is to become an independent person by becoming aware of the whole that sets everything in motion and attains a state of utter authenticity. The state of self or the consciousness of their soul, which means conscious unity with the whole, including all misunderstandings and flaws and a horoscope interpretation when something else is expected. The road to such completeness and self-knowing as the knowledge of the whole is always individual because everything in its nature is unique. For this reason, the road to selfhood is a process of individualization. So all of astrology basically is it's just who you are as a person. And if you go against what you are in nature, if you go against the flow, it's going to make things so much harder in life. So once you understand yourself and then you understand the core roots of why you act a certain way, then you can stop reacting to certain things via bad traits and you become aware of them. Now you realize, oh, there was a reason behind why I did blank because that's just like what it was in the chart. Now let me not react to it. And it shows you literally what you need to fix in your chart and what you need to fix in your life and all the positives you have. And then once you look at all the negatives, you fix those and you realize, oh, this is why I'm good at something. You can live your life better and understand yourself better. The sun sign being the most general reference to an individual character. So the sun is like the self, the character, the ego, who you are as a person. Winter in December 22nd, you so you have like the four, uh, four seasons. Winter, December 22nd, June 22nd, summer, March 22nd, spring. September 22nd, you have fall in the northern hemisphere and is opposite in the southern. So you have cardinal signs, <clears throat> start to the new season, good at starting something new. Signs are set to 30 degrees and go full circle. So there's 12 of them, each one's 30 degrees. So that makes it 360, full perfect geometry. The position of the earth in the space of the cosmos and not mythology associated with certain constellations. The name of the signs have been adopted from the constellations, but the signs themselves do not correspond to the constellation due to a slight oscillation of the earth's polar axis. The point of intersection of the elliptic sun's orbit, therefore the moment when the sun crosses the southern to northern hemisphere, <clears throat> When spring begins does not happen when the sun enters the constellation by the name of Aries. This point of intersection of the sun's orbit across the celestial equator continues to shift slightly retrograde, approximately one degree every 72 years, and this is called precision. Nowadays, it is the end of the horoscope sign of Aquarius, which means that precision passes through one sign for 2,160 years for the duration of one astrological era. The signs in the harmonious constellations correspond around 300 BC, but they were never before or after that date congruent. So everything is always changing. And I think we're in the sign of Aquarius. 
but it changes very, very slowly over time. So nothing is always the same, always constantly changing. The signs are not constellations, only the names are the same. Therefore, we are affected by some mysterious rays that are faraway constellations filled with the fancy of our ancestors, but a real position of the earth regarding its environment and the state of nature at that moment. Just like you're affected by your outer environment, you know how your outer environment is gonna reflect how you feel on the inside. And you know, if someone's not feeling really good on the inside, if you look at their environment, things aren't clean and put in order. Same thing with the larger scales of life. You look at, you know, like a strand of DNA is the same, the same of like outer things of life. You have like the tree of life, which looks like the same stems inside of ourselves, like our nervous system. So the outer planets, they have their own energy and they affect us on earth, depending on where they're at at a certain time. So it's not guesswork. All this stuff is down to a T, literally to the degree and the maths of it are insane. So you have each sign is about 30 degrees wide and has three 10 degree decans and one planet to rule over each one symbolically over time. Each sign has three phases of influence, the initial and middle and final one. All decans have been assigned the following planetary influences. So it lists first one is Aries and the first decon. So if you're born, I'm guessing like, let's say for example, Aries, usually all the dates in each sign are from like the 20th to the 20th. If you're born in the first like round, usually each month's like 30 days, 10 days for Mars or 10 days for the first decon, 10 days for the second. So if you're like, let's say for example, Aries is like the 20, whatever at the March, the first 10 into April are going to be the first decon. Then, then like maybe like one through the 10th is going to be the second decon. And then the 10th of April to the 20th of April will be the third one and each one has its own planet so Aries is Mars then the Sun then Venus Taurus is Mercury then the moon and Saturn Gemini is Jupiter Mars the Sun Cancer is Venus Mercury and then the moon Leo is Saturn Jupiter and the Mars Virgo is the Sun Venus Mercury Libra is the moon Saturn Jupiter Scorpio is Mars Sun Venus Sagittarius is Mercury Moon Saturn Capricorn is Jupiter Mars Sun Aquarius is Venus Mercury Moon Pisces is Saturn Jupiter and Mars there is even a finer differentiation according to each sign literally down to the degree that has a special impact so I think I had a book on that it's called the secret lives are birthday and it literally had things dedicated to the exact day it is the different levels of vibration and the quality of energy invested that give various forms to everything that exists and that is happening. An illusion that there is a fundamental difference between the invisible process of events of destiny, the visible objects of our being, we can only be interpreted as our attachments to the limited physical senses and their point of view. Forces that led humans through life and give them a certain destiny has been best reflected in the event that occurs much a part of nature as the force that keeps the blood flowing through our body and all of organic life. The egoic way of observing things is the only reason why we consider our blood flow to a natural urge. Our external actions, our free will, quote unquote, and all other events are mere coincidence or destiny. Such distinction is the rampart of the ego and ignorance of thereby our suffering. However, in nature, there is no suffering. It is a divine, perfect whole. Suffering only exists within the boundaries of the ego. We don't want to admit it to ourselves that we have done very little in our lives outside of satisfying our biological needs, barely scraping the surface of our spiritual essence, the real reason we exist in the first place, largely due to the ignorance of what our spiritual essence is. The last and first assumption of a person who doesn't believe in astrology is based on the previous one. By distinguishing the natural process from their actions, their ego creates an illusion that they have free will. The conviction is nothing but the manifestation of the unconscious is so widespread that the man of the commercial astrologers fell in love with it. They go as far to maintain that the human has free will and astrological factors only show tendencies which a person can use or benefit from or pass on or end up failing in the long run. It is true, but for only the enlightened being, not for the mere mortal. This conviction is appealing because it confirms the egoic unconsciousness, although with just a little bit of common sense, it is obvious that the most humans breath and blink unconsciously and spontaneously for your average person. Uh, this is true for your internal processes and events as well. It is hard to be fully aware of this because the natural conditionality is flexible enough to enable all of life and movements the way we know them within the boundaries of our ego. Truth be told, even the most insignificant or the most significant event could be directly to our destiny. So a lot of it 
is astrology and it's who you are. You obviously have free will and can do whatever you want. There's the balance, but a lot of what you have is literally due to the destiny before you even began. And it's hard to admit that, especially coming to the thing that like, oh, a lot of our life is kind of out of our control. It's just, again, it's who you are authentically. A lot of things you shouldn't have to try, it should happen naturally. But when you try to do things because you want to impress other people for the most part, or do things because for your own ego and satisfaction of like, oh, I can do blank to show other people. You're going against the flow of nature and you shouldn't feel good doing that stuff. A lot of the stuff is it's already rooted in your character and then you just have to follow that. Reality can appear unconnected. The mere result of accident, not being able to perceive, hidden away from our senses, the chain of casualty on the higher dimensions of events and phenomena may seem like the numerous whims of some god or devil, but the miraculous events are nothing more than the manifestation of higher dimensions in lower ones. To understand the law of casualty that rules over our nature and destiny, it is imperative to know that nature is not only what we can perceive with our physical senses, it is the multi-dimensional while we can observe only a single dimension with ourselves, a very narrow area of nature that we can call a physical three-dimensional world, the law of casualty. However, which explains why we do not see it in the law, it is entirely but only the parts that appear in passing through the physical plane and if we happen to be nearby, we can detect them or be informed by them in some other way. Since we fail to see the entire flow of the casualty, but only fragments of it, the ones that resonate with our paradigm. So a lot of things, again, they're already predetermined to happen, especially at certain times. The planets are always moving and sometimes the transits, they light up. That's why in astrology, you have horoscopes that are more so in the near term, near term yearly term, and ones that go all the way that happen once every time once in a lifetime type of things so a lot of those things they're already pre kind of destined to happen and most people i guess they kind of just leave that up to like oh this is a coincidence when no these star and then especially apparently the stars have a big influence on crazy events in our lives that have to do with the extreme the planets are more so subtle but long term so a lot of things that happen in our life where you thought oh i did this or whatever a lot of times it's that higher thing that's happening but when you start to become aware of that then you can start being prepped for it and know at certain times when events are more likely going to happen when we project them outwardly good into bad and evil into the devil we then are merely avoiding taking responsibility while implementing both that proving to be unconscious of our habits and ways once we accept responsibility it is always leads us to the awareness and goodness which is universal and does not depend on morality and the laws that are determined by the local environment Astrology, the queen of all knowledge, compatible of becoming free only by realizing what it is and that keeps us conditioned. For human use or for humans to use this knowledge properly, they must become aware of their conditionality first and not going on deceiving themselves of their freedom and independence was granted to them by simply being born in this life or through some God. There is destiny with predetermination as well as presence of free will. Together, side by side, predetermination imparts stability and casualty to events, whereas freedom produces creativity and new experiences, shaping all events. While without freedom, existence would be like a prison with no life inside. Without predetermination, freedom would slip into chaos and rampage with innumerable coincidences. So again, there's the balance of both. When we follow our earthly and bodily desires and urges, we always act unconsciously and we are slaves to destiny. Only when we act consciously in the best interest of our soul, our conscious, can we truly liberate ourselves. The only human freedom is to know oneself. Everything else is slavery and suffering. And that's one crazy part. Some people are destined to not have a good life because of what they did in past lives. And I guess if you're an astrologer and you're and someone, you know, for the first time, I was like, yo, read my chart and do blank. And you knew that person's life was just messed up and screwed from the start. That's just a hard pill to swallow. Because at least for mine, mine uh, mine's looking good for the home team out here in these streets. The purpose of astrology's analysis for human spiritual enlightenment and not for the fulfillment of personal desires. This type of misuse is the only reason for the many mistakes and misunderstandings that generally people have. So I've done that a few times with the, like I wanted to fulfill some personal desires and you can use astrology to benefit you with that, with learning about how all the planets work, how to gain control over a planet and how to draw stuff to you. So I think 
you know, if you do it for the wrong reasons of astrology, oh, you want to do something to hurt someone versus, you know, doing it good and healing people, and there's the different ones. Your motivation should usually be good in the underlying of, you know, trying to help yourself and help others rather than manipulate people. Modern theatrical physicist, everything is just an illusion and orchestrated for us by the nature of its sensory perception and not an expression of reality itself. Quantum physics has two slip theory and quantum entanglement. That's what it got me in around the seventh grade when I was like 12, 13. I was like, oh, there's glitches in our world. The very presence of an observer will change whether in the micro world, so the atomic world where everything's down to the particles and atoms. Sometimes they will act as particles and sometimes they will act as waves. So waves would be the energy and particle would be matter. Solar systems, but all depends on if someone observe it, it can change from energy into matter as soon as a person puts their awareness on it. it. Has always been there and they can do it. It's always like, it can happen like randomly as well with the quantum entanglement. Solar systems are necessary for life. However, many parts of the cosmos are not suitable for any kind of living. Solar systems are necessary for life. However, many parts of the cosmos are not suitable for any kind of, or my bad. Nothing is outward, nothing is inward, and for everything that is outward is inward. Just switch with your house. Your mind is the exact same thing as your environment. You must have a clean attic, garage, basement, closet. Everything has to be, you know, what's inside, what is outside, what is above, is below. The moon is the fastest cycle of 20, about 10 or 27 days-ish and is responsible for the mind, which is ever-changing. Mercury, responsible for the intellect and more stable than the, for the, than the mind, but still it has to be agile and quick. Venus, responsible for love and feelings, takes time for them to grow, but can still be apt to change and modify. Mars is the charge of energy and corporeality it takes time to build muscle and become fit and to acquire strength and then apply it jupiter is responsible for character we cannot change our character and philosophy overnight to change somebody it takes years and a lot of effort and it does not happen often just how like it takes jupiter a while more more time than a year to go around the earth or change all of its signs saturn responsible for wisdom the slowest characteristic to develop in life it may require a whole lifetime to develop but once it is done it cannot be undone the sun does not have to move at all it remains fixed at the center of the whole system but moves through the galaxy together with all of its planets to other planets it is immovable the sun is the soul, the complete, motionless, and permanent. For as long as the sun is there, there will be planets. When the sun burns out, all the planets in the solar system will be destroyed. The soul remains solid, infinite, and unchanged. Word zodiac stems from the Greek word zodian of the animal belt. Each zodiac rules parts of the body from head to toe. There are 12 phases and signs coming full circle, compromised of four elements, three qualities, you know, the four seasons. So Pisces, Aries, and Taurus is spring, the period of growth. Gemini, Cancer, and Leo is summer, acquiring awareness of the ego. Virgo, Libra, Scorpio is fall, mental organization, harmony and hierarchy, enable spiritual ascension. Sagittarius, Capricorn, and Aquarius is the winner, aspires toward liberation from space-time, conditionally to the pure consciousness, spirit and meaning, and overcoming limitations. Elements are earth, water, fire, and air. Earth is perception, water equals feeling. Fire equals intuition and air equals thinking. Fiery signs are Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, intuitive, direct, impulsiveness. Earth is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, material plane, earth materials, land, rock, metals. Air is Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, learning, knowledge, communication. Water, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, emotions, reactions, and your subconscious. The ether, Akasha records, quantum field, where everything originates from. The notion of the ether is forbidden in science because Nikola Tesla discovered that limitless energy could be harvested from the ether free of charge. Ether was thrown out of the periodic table of elements by D.I. Mendeleev, where it is preoccupied for the most prominent places on Earth's ether. So I'm trying to figure that out now because if you're able to manipulate energy and have all the energy in the world, you don't need external things and obviously all that they hide things because of money an inch below the navel of every human has a black hole a field of pure ether or acacia where everything has already happened the space time is a functionality determined according to the laws of geometry and numbers stellium one or more planets are in a single house causing the one-sidedness and behavior and the aspirations in life our dissatisfaction and 
Life is a direct consequence of failing to contribute to our spiritual authenticity. Karma is punishment or reward for an action. Purpose of liberation is freedom from karma. Interpersonal relationships, compatibility charts, sinistry, thoroughly conditioned by planetary influences, cries in conflict, self-interest, and prevailing for X amount of time, sometimes temporary or sometimes forever. It happens when someone's destiny is so strong that it pours a pulls a person, person towards them like gravity itself of life of another person with such a powerful gravity the one who is predestined to serve this purpose with the corresponding planetary positions to act as their assistant a go between that conveys certain information so that's why some people we click with right away we're drawn towards them by some we're repelled that all has to do with your charts so sometimes people's charts they don't match well together apparently in india this is how they do with marriage where they literally look at the person's chart and is it going to work because again this is just the nature of how things are. Above all, astrology gets rejected because of an immature man is unable to cope with the chief principles of the rain, carnation, and karma, as well as the need to work on themselves. The one who accepts these laws of astrology is the best assistance could one could get to the road of enlightenment, like a Mars for every or a Mar, I don't know what I wrote there, for every soul is given not to have to wonder about this world. Or, or my bad, this is a map. So we're all given maps via our strategy chart to then navigate the world so we don't have to do it blindly. An unconscious spontaneous reaction is the most elementary characteristics of the natural conditionality. So if you see a lot of people, they're all react to things. They don't, they're not consciously aware of the moment. They can't stop themselves. That's just your base level for your average human. Any attempt to change the destiny in some segment in life in order to fulfill one's desires is simply a trap for the new form of slaves and new shaping of desire. Stop searching for authenticity outside of yourself via outer missionaries, religion, set of belief systems, rituals, myths, symbols, and authorities, but instead in some objectivization to find it from your inside within the realms of your own beings. Everything should come from inside of you not outside of you. Stop listening to things external. It should all come to you naturally. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. That is a metaphysics of astrology. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good day and peace out.